beings retain the possibility of opening to one another to realize their full created and creative potential, so do human beings retain the possibility of opening to God, who transgresses the limits of created finitude, inviting mortal creatures to partake of immortality, of life eternal, actuality eternal, fullness of being, fullness of life. Openness is the open gate that God's Spirit can freely pass through. Thus, for Stein, the response and disposition of openness is that which allows a personal creature to become its fully actualized self, realizing its maximal potential. The vision of the fully actualized self attests to an eschatological rendezvous between the hosts of personal spiritual beings and the eternal triad of love, an eternal communal life wherein every personal soul who opens to divine life is to be inserted as a flower in an eternally imperishable wreath. So what's up with the balloons? Actualized being. Yes, actualized being, precisely. Thank you. Um, so it's the idea that, uh, an analogously, like, like I'm like God, I'm going to breathe life into this balloon in potentia. It's not yet a balloon that brings joy to children, you know, and adults or childlike. <laughs> um, but it's flaccid, it's limp. This isn't, we wouldn't call this a balloon fully in the sense of balloon, in this. So as God, I must breathe divine life into this balloon to let it become what I intended it to be in its fullness. And so it must be open. If it's closed off, I can't breathe life into it. Um, so it must be remain open and it must receive the divine life in it and, and be shaped, be formed into its full uh, potential vis-a-vis -vis other balloons. We're not talking about one isolated balloon in time and space. We're talking about a host of balloons that Einstein says is God is the plentitude of love, desires to communicate God's self into a plentitude of souls to fully actualize God who is um, eternal love. So, uh, one more time. <laughs> and even if it pops... Yeah, it's vulnerable. It's, it's vulnerable. vulnerable. It's vulnerable. I was taking a chance at this. They could totally blow my presentation. But then we would point to the resurrection. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so we have a host of balloons, different colors, and they complement one another. Orange is orange insofar as it's not black, green, red, blue, etc. And so we are. And we look around and we are um, children of God um, who have the capacity to open ourselves to divine life and grace as we breathe into us, actualize our full actually being. Thank you very much. <laughs> Any questions? Do we have time? A couple yeah. minutes? We have probably like five minutes. Okay. okay. Perfect. I yeah, kind of a comment and asking for further comments. I really um, have been thinking a lot about vulnerability and love and how love is opening yourself up to the possibility of being wounded. And actually, often is you know requires a forgiveness after being wounded, and how the cross is like the that's the epitome of that, you know, and all of us is called to the that way of the cross. Um, but I also love the analogy of the infant um, that you brought up as again totally vulnerable, totally dependent, but so much potential there for um, for you know full being and that that development. Um, and I just didn't, did, does Edith Stein, did she specifically talk about the infant uh, analogy, or is that something that you drew from elsewhere? Um. <laughs> because I think, it made me think of the faith like a child, and Jesus yeah. saying, you know, you must be like one of these little ones to enter the kingdom of heaven, and that sort of. Yeah, um, that part in my paper was actually original with myself as far as pursuing the idea of the infant. However, I must admit, I think it is um, at least implicit throughout Stein's work. And I think I may have even heard someone yesterday in a presentation, you know, give a quote of hers that talked about 
the child, the infant. Uh, so so uh, I can't think of a specific reference right now. I want to say, you know, um, that it's there. But there is a picture of Stein. I don't have it here, where she's she's holding one of her um, nieces, I think, and and a little a little girl. And it's just you know it speaks so much of her and her person, um, and and she's just tenderly looking on, on on this girl. And if you can find the picture, like if you just Google Einstein, and you'll see it online. But I think that picture itself speaks to. To her life, and like uh, Bernard of, of, of Clairvaux, I think Edith Stein is one who, um, you know, is, is going to act to the degree she contemplates and contemplate to the degree she acts. Um, and so, um, uh, certainly, uh, the child is there. I think. Um, but your your question about vulnerability in the cross, um, this, as Paul said, you know, uh, a stumbling block. Um, can be a stumbling block or absurdity, as uh, Bishop Darcy talked about last night. Um, and for feminist thought, feminist critique, at least a certain brand of feminist critique, wants to um, dismiss of the cross, you know, um, like um, just extricate the cross from, from thinking uh, as that which perpetuates violence, perpetuates domination, etc. So it is, uh, um, I think it, that argument needs to be addressed within this, this um, reflection um, in no space or time here, but I don't want to just give lip service to it. I think it's a very important question, but um, the demands of uh, responsibility is key in this, that no person is an island to be vulnerable on one's own, but we're vulnerable together. We must um, live in solidarity and defend each other. And, and those who are strong among us must come to the assistance of the weak. And yet, the weak uh, give us strength that the strong don't possess, kind of idea. Um, so I think the infant, um, contemplating the life of the infant, uh, there's Psalm 131, um, like a weaned child on its mother's lap, so is my soul within me. And um, to, to contemplate oneself as an infant in the arms of Christ, and even an infant in one in each other's arms, I think really uh, gets at this heart of this shaping, this fear, letting oneself be overcome by another and be shaped by interaction, by conversation, by doing life with with um, each other. So, good question. Proposal of um, uh, vulnerability. Um, where it starts with the risk of opening oneself. Um, where to begin? Especially if one has been greatly wounded in life, and, and you feel you can't trust anybody because of how your parents were, you're abused, you're sexually abused, whatever the case may be. I think. A key is for one to be able to tell one's story. To be able to tell one's story. Edith Stein emphasizes empathy. And so if I've been wounded and I need to um, gain trust in my, my fellows, I need to first be listened to and empathized with. And then I'll be empowered um, to risk a kind of vulnerability. There's a vulnerability in sharing my story and giving myself in a kind of transparent way, in a fragmentary way. Um, but I think that um, process of um, sharing life narratives and then um, empathetic listening, and not only listening, but a continued listening, that affirming response of the one who shared their story, you know, like, uh, not just saying, you know, I, I know what you mean, 
but just listening and sitting with the person and crying with the person and hugging the person. Um, that kind of affirming response is, is, is um, you could say, it's breathing life into the person. Just as God, as pure acts, pure actuality, breathes life into us so we can become these instruments, these uh, vessels, these jars of clay, 2 Corinthians, that God's actuality is channeled through and then um, we lift each other up. Um, and, and to recognize that, that everybody is vulnerable. You know, there's not those who are not vulnerable. Everyone is, even if you pretend you're not, um, let's say, argue that. So hopefully, um, I would say that that's the start. It's not a matter of um, interiority, it's a matter of uh, exteriority. And that encounter with the other, and that conversation that takes place is therapeutic. Um, and it's life-giving. So I guess uh, could keep going on, but I think <laughs> yeah. Well, that's not a good one to get